Hello and welcome to another episode of Idol Stand Nation. I'm one of your hosts, Jihoon, and joining me is Nick. It will be just be the two of us today. Hey. Yep. So, uh, even though it's just two of us, doesn't mean that we will have any less full of an episode. In fact, we've had quite a few comebacks this week, right? Yeah, we've had a lot of comebacks this week, actually, from a lot of a lot of artists, uh, new and old. Yeah. Um, so among them, like Wacky Wacky with with Picky Picky, they just called feedback. Band is dramatic. Uh, XID is me and you. Is their their final, right? You said. Yeah, it's their final for, as far as we know, a while. Yeah, and then winners, ah, uh, yeah, BB, she debuted, right, with Binu? Yep, de- de- debut with Binu. And let's see, you said it was a, a few others as well. Um, so again, it's just it's just too many for us to cover for a single episode. Um, if we don't talk about them, it doesn't mean that they're not worth looking at. So definitely. Yeah, these are just the the music videos that stood out and songs that stood out to us. So Nick, um, why don't you go ahead and start things off? All right, so we're going to start off with Bandits first, uh, Comeback, which... Yeah, that's quick early, right? It's very early for Bandit. Um, a lot of people were thinking it was going to be like late June before we'd see even rumors of a comeback. Yeah, which is very typical. Very quick. Yeah, because, you know, typically um, after a comeback or debut or comeback, um, the group will promote, like any group, right? Um, they'll promote for about a month or so. You know, doing performances and whatnot, and then they'll have another month of secondary uh, type of promotions where they're on like variety shows, um, talk shows, radio shows, and whatnot. And after that, yes, exactly. they take what like a two or three week, maybe a month month long break. You know, spend time with the family, and then start rehearsals for the next comeback. Mm-hmm. So usually, you, if if a group is actively promoting like that, yeah, yeah. So you, you can typically expect about a three to five month long cycle in between uh, comebacks. So for them, this is what, um, six weeks, five weeks? Uh, something like that, yeah. I mean, pr- their promotions ended really early, and so we were kind of wondering what's happening with that. Yeah, well, and I mean, now we know why. Now we know. Yeah, they, they went <laughs> they straight to be the head of the curve. Yep. Yeah. So what do you think? Uh, I really liked it. Yes. I, thought, I thought it was great for a comeback, and especially, you know, with... Um, it was great to come back, you know, and have a song that, in my opinion is better than their debut song right and so. it, you know that um hocus pocus it wasn't bad i, I liked it no um, it was good it was definitely different it wasn't um again right we we <laughs> had talked about how we've been burnt out on uh, the girl crush concept for the past the girl what, crush concept, episodes yeah. yeah and hocus pocus with and bandit you know they, it wasn't exactly girl crush but it wasn't like like bubblegum pop or either yeah it was it was kind of a mix between mm-hmm. yeah you know, and, and um, it, it had some aspects of that girl crush but it also had very much aspects of bubble pop yeah and it was also kind of ahead of the curve on how we're now into fully into the swing of everyone going into like the more mature style pop right yeah definitely yeah um the song itself uh what do you think i think it was great my favorite part hands down is the chorus i thought i thought um, it was all well packaged together. Um, everything from the pacing and the musical accompaniment and the vocals. Right. I mean, yeah, they they connect the chorus to the verses almost seamlessly, and it's it's great. And it maintained a, a very nice, consistent sound because, like with other with other um, songs that we've seen before throughout this year, um, I think the, one of the prime examples of this is uh, Itzy with Dala Dala, where they kind of had a fusion of genres within the same song mm-hmm. where it would be at times it would be abrupt like very abrupt uh, especially with Dala Dala and we'd seen that as well with um let's see XID's um their latest comeback with uh, Me and You it was mm-hmm. kind of abrupt right um <laughs> yeah that's that's a word for it yeah so without going too too much into it right now because we'll talk about it later um yeah it, I, I thought it was I thought it was very uh, well put together and in fact uh I wasn't planning on, on getting like their mini album with, with the Hocus Pocus, but after this one, I, w- I want to pick it up. Exciting. As far as the, as far as like the music video, what do you think? Um, I thought the music video was was uh was really well done. I really enjoyed the cinematography of it. Yeah, it's a um it was a performance style music video, and those are honestly my favorite. Same. I was gonna say that that is what I what I enjoy most. I would say. And I mean, honestly, it feels the most like real, you know, oh, yeah. I don't feel like I'm watching a movie and that's not to say that that movie style 
you know, uh, MVs are bad. It's just I prefer something where it's going to be more like a performance video where, you know, I can see how the dancing connects to the song. Yes, because I, I love um, witnessing choreography. I love seeing how the whole choreography is from start to finish. And for songs that don't have a choreography to go with this, to, you know, to go with the song itself, as you, you know, that's typical of like uh, solos, especially then the movie style music videos are, are perfectly fine. Mm-hmm. You know, it gives you something to look at. Um, Cause I mean, there are other, I've seen some other music videos where you could loosely call it a music video. Or it's just the, the artist sitting down and singing into a microphone. Yeah. If I can yep. find it, I'll, 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 uh, I'll put a clip in, in the, in the video, but um, it's pretty plain. It doesn't do the song justice. So, for this, I, I mean, think um, that style really fits ballads. It that does whole, like, sit down and like make a movie type of yeah of but... MV really fits ballads. Like, uh, what's it called? EXO's Miracle in December. You know, they they were ba- there is no choreography to it, and so they made a movie in the MV, and it works really well. Right, but like the sit down uh, recording, like just a shot of the artist uh, sitting down and recording, that works if they have a strong enough presence. Which mm-hmm. some soloists soloists don't. So right, definitely. But yeah, um, you know, going back to Bandit with with uh, dramatic, I thought, I thought you know that style of music video is is very appropriate, and especially especially for the, for the choreography. Um, man, uh, I I don't know. I, I thought I I can't think of anything about the choreography that I didn't like. Me either, honestly. I thought it would, it all flowed really well. It didn't seem choppy in the slightest. Which, yeah, and I mean, I yeah, guess it's coming from Stone Music, that can happen. Yeah. Well, is uh, Stone their label or is this their uh, their distributor? Because Stone is also a distributor for other labels. Right. Uh, um, I don't see. know too much about them in terms of label wise. I thought they were MNH's group. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Um, pretty sure it's M- MNH group with uh. Yeah, it is, and Stone yeah, yeah, is yeah. the distributor. So, um, okay. <clears throat> well, yeah. Uh, so moving along, uh, what's the next piece? Next piece is BB's debut with Binu. I liked it a lot. I was really surprised. It's so, super catchy for being such a chill song. Yeah. Right. Like it's, it's amazing. I mean, so, from, from the very big, from the very intro, right, where she had like, um, you know, her her vocals are were kind of monotone right and she kind of had like that that stone face in the music video but you know i, I thought okay so where is the direction going to go from here is it gonna flip flop into something more expressive more dramatic more funny goofy silly or no it just kind of stayed like that throughout the whole video but it was still so fascinating mm-hmm. her uh her her like facial expressions gave me very iu vibes yes Yes, I I, I I use the same way. Yeah, because um, and, and I was actually really hesitant to kind of bring that up, um, because you know, so many artists get get compared that way, right? Mm. Um, but and, and it's not to say that she's a a copycat or she's trying oh. to copy the Aya style. Oh no, not even close. These yeah. these songs are very different. Yes, and, and even even. Their presence, because IU has a has a more mysterious kind of presence, where it just kind of mm-hmm. like draws you into like wanting to like get lost into her world. With BB, the presence that she has with this is much more along the lines of just chill, right? Like it just kind of welcomes you into like just want to hang out and and Definitely. be her friend, right? So and, and even um even the song itself is it just so chill. I loved it. It was, and even though it was so chill, it wasn't boring. Right. There was never a time where, you, you know, you were like, oh, I've heard this chorus 40 times. Right. Which in chiller songs can happen a lot where they repeat the chorus to add filler because, you know, there's not a lot to say. Yeah, because they get chill re- song. repetitive. This song yeah. wasn't repetitive at all. And even the musical accompaniment, it wasn't. It, so the musical accompaniment is fairly simple. But at the same time, it's complex with its sub- subtleties, right? Because it, it was very subtle. And mm-hmm. yet, despite that, um, I think because of, because it's subtle and, and not trying to do too much, it accompanies her voice, her vocals very well, and 
you know, for me, for me personally, he just invited me to like look more into the details of the vocal imagery and the the musical accompaniment. Definitely. Yeah. I'll, I'll be honest. I did not expect rapping. Oh yeah. No, I, I, I didn't either. That first, vo- that first uh, verse where she's rapping mm-hmm. at the subverse. It, it, oh my God. I was like, wait a minute. What? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but that's it, awesome. It, it worked. And, and again, I, that was just one of those things that helps the song not be repetitive. Definitely. So, uh, you know, the the music video itself, um, I th- I, man, yeah, it's just it's it. There's no better way to describe me it either. It's just it's chill, you know. So it's a good it song, a good music video to come back home from a hard day at work or school, and just relax to. I, I will say there's a lot of blue in oh, yeah. this music video, yep. and coming from like obviously you know music video as the perspective of a colorblind person, blue being like the a, a color that I can see accurately like normal color vision this is great yeah and it's like i can actually see it and know that of know what i'm looking at know that it's you know correct for lack of a better term seeing seeing it as how the director intended exactly yeah yeah you and know. you know from color psychology as well like blue is also more of a especially that shade of blue is, is definitely one of the more serene type of colors and that really lends it, itself to the overall feel of you know a chill song a chill music video so it was very it has a very appropriate color to color palette for the music video. Definitely. All right. So you got anything else you want to add to that um, music video? Uh, definitely my second, if not third favorite song of this year so far. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it, it's I a mean, very strong I've, song. I've had it on repeat and I'm still not bored of it. The, the two songs so far for this year that I've had on repeat is this song, uh, Be New, because it's, outrageously catchy and obviously tan's voice i'm still have that on repeat <laughs> let's see this is definitely like way up there in terms of like songs that i like from from artists that have released so far this year man if i was to go over the, the songs i have on re- repeat um i could spend like an entire episode on just that so oh definitely that's why i'm just keeping it to like the new ones because <laughs> <laughs> i definitely have old songs that are that have that are on repeat yeah, but and I'm still finding myself like rediscovering uh, other like songs and albums from like even th- this year, right? Because like I'll go back, oh man, I haven't listened to you know G Friend in a while. Let me go bring that up. And, like, oh man, so I'll be on like a G Friend kick for a couple of days and then move on to like April or yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm always on a G Friend kick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do we got next? Next is Ladies Code feedback. Okay, go ahead, start it off. Uh, well, first off, nice to see them again. Yeah, yeah. It's um, been a minute. It's been since 2016 since they last uh, had a comeback as a group. Um, I'm not including their Christmas special from was it 2017? Was it last Something year? Like that, yeah, I where it wasn't really a comeback. Yeah, I don't really. I tend to not count um Christmas specials as comebacks. So yeah, me either. It's fine. It's, but um, yeah, it's nice to see them back um after you know all the unfortunate events that happened with that group yeah uh so and it's nice to know that like the group's not going to disband because of like what happened in the past yeah i mean and that they're going to keep them that you like their group name strong and i mean honestly they came back and hit hard this this mv dude yeah i um at, at first i guess i wasn't in the mood for it um i was uh, underwhelmed right when mm-hmm. i watched it but that's because um i've been hard all week and busy all week with uh you know between work and working on our last episode the video for that last mm-hmm. episode and you know i guess i was in such a rush to like get back to get back to working on the episode that i kind of just didn't give that music video its due, due the diligence and i'm glad I, I i gave it another shot god it's so good oh yeah it's definitely very very well done especially for for that type of sound right um i know over these past um, 22, not our 23rd episode, um, for most of the most of the groups that I talked about and most of the songs I talked about, I never really received those type of song, these, like a song like this, as favorably. Mm-hmm. Um, like I've always said, like you know, groups like Mama Moo or um, XID. As much as I like the groups, I you know wish I liked their music as much as I like the groups because 
that type of style is never was never really my thing. And I think uh, for for ladies code, yeah, uh, feedback it is it's a great song. Um, it's not poppy, right? It's not like bubblegum pop. It's got that that same type of like mature kind of a harder sound, right? Similar to like Mamamoo and um, what's another group? Uh, I can't I can't think of it right now, but you know to that to those type of groups and it it really it really grabbed me. Um, I'm definitely going to, once we get done recording this, I'm going to go back in and, and watch the music video again. You know, and, and it's not and it's not Girl Crush. Yeah, and it's not Girl Crush because we you know I like this trend that we've been on of not Girl Crush. Yeah, like, it's it's great. I think it's I think it's like a sign of the times. Maybe maybe Girl Crush is finally done. I won't say it's done. Um, because oh, I mean, please don't tell me that. <laughs> Well, so I want it to be done. Yeah, you know, I don't want it um, to be like dead, but not the dominant trend, please. Yeah, that th- you know that for sure I will agree with. Um, but I don't think it's dead because like even when you look at let's go back to K-pop girls Amino, right? Um, where we'll have like some new user, you know, join the join the Amino and they'll make a post of like, hey, what's another uh, girl crush group? Uh, you know, that's similar to like Blackpink and, and blah blah, right? So mm-hmm. um, you're definitely still seeing a lot of that within the K-pop realm. You, know, you see it in the comments, especially for like a lot of those type of groups where someone will, will pop in and like, hey, you know, what other groups are similar to this type of sound? <clears throat> right, um, right. So I won't, say, I won't say that it's going away anytime soon. Yeah, but, that's... But I do share your yeah. sentiment. I'm glad that um, we're finally moving on, moving on from Girl Crush being the only comeback that anyone's coming out with. Yeah, I'm... And you know it's nice. To, it's nice that once you know, Girl Crush is finally not the dominant like trend. It'll be nice. It'll be nice to see groups that went to Girl Crush go back to their old concept. If yeah. They do. Yeah. I mean, and, and I think too. Uh, at least for like groups with like April, who had never done Girl Crush before up until their last comeback. Um, I think that's a good experience for them. You know, mm-hmm. to kind of get that versatility right and kind of build up that repertoire. So that way, they're they're more adaptable to few the times so it, it's definitely something that, that's uh it's it, i think it's a good sign of what we got going on next we'll be seeing a uh, girl crush g friend <laughs> oh. <laughs> i mean so they've been at it for coming for going on five years now and they've never really strayed away from their core concept same with lovelies lovelies been around for about as long and they've well, always kind of stuck with that same concept that's why that's why the they're the G friends concept, that p- the almost pure innocent concept. That's why it is like the G friend concept. They yes. almost like stamped it as the G friend concept because they're not they're not entirely a pure concept. They're a bit different because they have different elements. Normally, yeah. normally pure comes with very poppy, and G friend is a little poppy, but it also has aspects of like blues and funk and whatever else. Yeah. And, um. You know, especially with like the chords they use and whatever. But like, and Lovely's uh, so Lovely's occupies the same realm as uh, yeah. G Friend, except with G Friend, they their their sounds are are very distinct because you know where G Friend's G Friend's uh, um sound is more reliant on acoustic instruments, right? Mm-hmm. Versus Lovely's, which they do incorporate that, but they're more reliant on synthetic um on synth yeah. sounds. Lovely Use uses a lot of synths. Yes. And even even a lot of uh, like Lovely's music, they use real instruments and then they convert them through MIDI to synths. Yes. So So it's, it's not, not unheard to... of that like to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and you know, it's not to say that they're rivals that you should only pick one over the other. Um, I think they're they're great. They accompany each other each other very well. Um, yeah. I mean it's, like it's kind of like up. um it's it's kind of like um SIS, right? Mm-hmm. They they occupy the same realm as G Friend, the yes. almost the almost the similar same concept, and um and as a result, you know they they get paired to, they get compared to G Friend a lot because of the the same concept and that G Friend has so it is so monopolized on that concept. Well, the the primary um, distinction between the two is age targeting because mm-hmm. SIS is definitely a more youthful group, and I could definitely see them targeting more of like the Kind of preteen, early teen uh, market, whereas G Friend is more the, like the late teen, you know, young twenty something market. Mm-hmm. If you don't know us, I stand them. By the way, gotta gotta shout them out whenever I can. 
they're they're so unknown it's it hurts yep um, and, man so we spent but, more time talking about other things besides uh ladies code i mean we didn't really have a whole lot to say about it i mean it, it's right now i'm kind of waiting for their next comeback to see if they change concept if you know because when when groups come back after a long time like this they're kind of i don't want to call them unstable but there's no better word for it well that's not to say that, that they were inactive though because they weren't they, inactive they were on hiatus too, well, basically. Well, as a group, they while well, they didn't hadn't promoted as as a group um, for a few years, they had individual activities. So right. the members were doing were doing their own solo work, and for this song, for this comeback as a group, it matches well with what they were doing as soloists um, prior to. So I, mm-hmm. I see this as building upon what they had established as soloists, and for the next comeback, I just see that as more of a continuation of the direction they're going right now. Hopefully, yeah. It, it, K-pop is anything but predictable, so we can only make our best guesses. But well, I, mean, I, we can, I, 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 I believe you're right. Well, we, well plus we can we can kind of narrow it down because for one, they're an, they're an older group, so we know they're not going to be going after like the the youthful, you know, bubblegum pop sound of like Elris or SIS. Right. So, I mean, if they did, it'd be pretty hilarious, I guess. It would. It would be really, really, really funny. I mean, I guess it would be more along the lines of like that time uh, Mama Moo did a parody of that G Friend song. Oh, yeah, yeah, it would be exactly like that. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you have not seen that, it's very much worth uh, checking out. I'll link in the Absolutely. in the video description. It's pretty hilarious. It's it, it was great. So, uh, let's see, you want to move on to the not so quick quick shots? Uh, first, before we do that, let's get into our weekly recs. Oh, yeah. So between, let's see, Wiki Meki, Ladies Code, Bandit, BB, XID, Winner, Ace, um, who else? Yeah, um, between all, all of them, who gets your pick? Oh. Bandit had a great comeback. And yeah. I do believe that they, they killed it. And I mean, like I said, BB's been... All over, but I think I have to give my weekly rec to Ace. Wow, I, I've I've supported Ace since their pre debut, since I yeah since pre debut, and regardless of the controversy, because I have had some controversy and you know whatever else that's come with them, I'll continue to support that group until the group is dead. <laughs> um, you know. They they take my number one slot purely out of respect for how much work they put into that song, and they they even made like a song just re- just before this that was actually um, a precursor to this. Not oh, okay. not not storyline wise, but they were they literally recorded a full song to hype the train up for this song. Okay, that's that's actually and, pretty intriguing, and it's great and. So, and it's the first time I've ever seen a group do that. And, you know, it, it was the the whole theme for that song revolved around like what what do you want to tell Choice? For those that don't know Choice is their fandom name. Um, mm-hmm. you know, what do you want to tell Choice? And so they were talking about how the only way they could tell they could, the only way they could tell tell the fandom their feelings is through music. Right on. And, you know, that really like that really doesn't matter. So, it's it's got to be it's got to be Ace. Okay. Uh, for myself it's really hard. Between Ladies Code and Bandit and BB is what I got it narrowed down to, and it's a it is a very very close uh, close running between those three, and mm. I'll say I'll give my pick to Bandit. Okay. Yeah. yeah um, man, that, that is a really tough call. Um, I mean, you know, they they got me to buy their or look forward to buying their album, so you know, they, they've done very well. They've, they must be doing something right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I mean, so. I, f- I feel like we're playing worth it a little bit with this. I don't know. I don't know if you know what that is, but like, uh, great. the bu- the Buzzfeed worth it. Anyway, um, so moving on to the quick shots. Oh yeah, yeah. The we have a few quick shots actually. Quite I a few. I won't be as quick though. We'll probably end up talking about probably. Them a bit. Uh, Ace City's comeback was uh, is here for a quick shot. 
And the reason some of you will probably be wondering, the reason that it's in a quick shot is because there wasn't that much for us to talk about as I, Jihoon, from what I understand, is not like a huge X80 fan. So I, lo I love right. the you, members. You, yeah, right. you said you love the members. Don't really. I just wish I loved their music. Oh. And I'm I'm a I'm a soft stand, but I don't like. I mostly support the group. I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I mostly support the group for Honey. Yeah, she's amazing. Uh, Especially since uh, you know she is a huge fan girl of All My Girls Audien. So you know that that uh, right yeah. that alone you know gave her like a thousand points from me. <laughs> 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 but no, um, like, she she is awesome though. Um, I loved her work on. When she used to be on uh, Weekly Idol. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, go ahead, continue. Um, very, very interesting comeback, especially because they know they're going on hiatus. I thought it would be much more sentimental. You know, yeah. Like see, see you again type of vibe. Yeah, like but um, it, it wasn't like Nine that Muses? at all. Yeah. Nine Muses. Or uh, like, remember. Yeah, or like um, you know, maybe like Seventeen's uh Kumapta, or. Even like I always downpour, you know something, something where it'd be like you know a kind of like you know we'll be back kind of vibe, but it's you know like thanks for all these times kind of thing. Yeah, I I was surprised to see it wasn't in the chorus. Uh man, it felt like we went back to 2014. Yeah, back when the EDM drops were a thing. Yeah, well, I mean, it did have a resurgence last year. Yeah, it did. You're right. And um, you know, it was. Kind of what I talked about earlier with uh, having an abrupt transition into a, a different genre. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That is very abrupt. But I mean, that's not, and I mean, that's not anything strange for XID though. Um, previous songs have had that. I, I just felt like this one was a bit more than usual. Like they, they kind of cranked it up to eleven on that. Yeah, I, I felt it was a bit more aggressive than EXID's normal style, but. Uh, I still really enjoyed it. Aside from the chorus, honestly, I don't think the chorus was a good fit. Yeah, um, I mean, it wasn't. It wasn't bad by any means, but it just. I I think there's a time and place for every song, and this is very much like a. I could see this being a semi debut, like first comeback, second comeback type type of song. But yeah, for a group going on hiatus until further notice type of song, it just doesn't fit. I, I wanted something much more sentimental. I wanted something yeah. that felt like they 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 knew what the fans were thinking because they know what the fans are thinking right now. So it's kind of like a, um kind of helping the fans stay in denial of what could yeah. Because I mean, e even myself, I'm a I'm so I'm a soft stand, but even myself, I was like, oh, this means disband. Like, I'll, we saw SNSD did the same thing, right? Where they went on. Technically, they're not disbanded; they're on indefinite hiatus. Um, or I shouldn't say indefinite hiatus, but they're on hiatus until further notice type of thing, where uh, they can they can further use the name. Yeah, because like uh, um, even though Tiffany didn't resign with the label, she she did ex explicitly state that she would not stop being a part of Girls Generation. So you know they're not the group's not dead. Um, and they did have a comeback shortly after that announcement, at least with the uh, remaining active members under the label. So right, yeah, it just leaves the door. What it does is leave the door open for possible activities in the future. Yeah, and so EXID is taking the same route since Honey and Jungwa are not resigning with the label. So, which is effectively half the group. Which you know, which will make it that much more exciting and I guess bittersweet when a reunion happens in the future. So, speaking of reunions, uh, moving on to the next piece. All right, segue. Yeah. <laughs> 21 had their 10 year reunion did you cry and i'm not gonna lie there might have been a tear or two so <laughs> for those of you that don't know or kind of uh started watching when i was already on which would be rather new but still um ex city was my introduction or ex city uh 21 was my introductory group into k-pop and they were the group that really kept me in k-pop i Followed them, jeez, back in 2012, I think. The 2012 or early 2013, something like that. It's crazy. And you know, I've been, like, really... They hold a special place in my heart, honestly. Uh, I don't think... 
I could ever call them like a bias group, but it's more like a group that I hold above every other group because they are my gateway into like this community that I can now call home. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they have, they have that um, emotional significance and mm-hmm. even for myself. Uh, so I, I've been, I've been in the K-pop scene for a long time now, since the late nineties. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the things I noticed too, uh, with, e- with every generation of, or going to grow group generations anyways, uh, you've always got that one group that is like a, more along the lines of like the, the pretty uh, feminine type of group. And you got the other group that's like the kind of like the anti version of that, right? You know, they're the more right. independent, stronger, uh, stronger women. And with uh, 21, they, they provided a, a great kind of like an offset to girl generation. Yeah, and, definitely. You know, I, I love them both. You know, you, there's again, there's no saying that you have to pick one over the other. And for me, I was a huge, huge uh, Girls' Generation fan when I want to say like maybe a year or two after after they debuted. But you know, I can't just listen to only one group. You know, I like variety, and Twenty One gave me a great variety. In fact, for a while, they were pretty much the only two girl groups I really listened to. And you know, for for me, Twenty One um, also holds a, a special place in my heart. And you know, when I, once I saw this or this article, I haven't watched the video myself. I, I I was kind of like wow yeah I couldn't believe it but it's, but it's real folks um go ahead and check it out for all you twenty one fans I know you've been years. looking forward to this yeah ten years man ten years so what's the next piece uh, the next piece oh boy everybody everybody press press the red alert button strap yourself in because here we go <laughs> FX for SM Town Live twenty nineteen in Tokyo. Yes. Now, like this actually is FX. Now, this is not hard confirmed that it's actually fully FX, like four member FX. However, the a picture was posted on the SM Town Live 2019 in Tokyo on the poster, including all four members of FX in the picture, which leads us to believe it's a four member performance, which would be great that sm let them out of the dungeon yeah because um again just like just like uh june all right you good yeah starting recording again okay right. uh, i never stopped so still going. oh okay yeah so we were talking about um for fx the last their last comeback as a group was in 2016 so just like with ladies code um they had a long time and since then I'm not too sure about all the rest of the members, but I know Amber some solo work going, right? Yes, they all had their kind of little little like solo things going. On In fact, um, Amber had had something earlier this year. Ah, man, I didn't get a chance to check it out. I forgot all about it to be honest. Right. So, um, who knows? Well, will we actually get a a performance from FX as a group? Well, performance. Uh, I'd I'd love to see it. I know you could barely, you could barely, you know, yeah. When you saw the link, right? Oh, dude, I didn't think it was real. I thought, I thought you were, you were playing me. Oh man, yeah, like I could hardly believe it myself. I thought I, I actually had to check like the calendar. I'm like, it's not April Fools, is it? Yeah. So, all right, and then let's see, uh, Monster X. They're gonna be making a special appearance on uh, Cartoon Network's We Bear Bears. Yeah, yeah, that's it's really interesting. They're the, um, they're the first K-pop act to appear on. We bear bears. Yeah, and um, well, onto any American uh, animated show, right? I'm trying to think. Um, I don't think anyone's I think ever done so. It. The article just specifies that they're the first act to appear on We Bear Bears, so there may have been something where someone appeared before, back in possibly the second How You Look or How You Wave. Mm. Well, I mean, it's for me, it's you know exciting news as well because uh, we we're just we we're starting to see it even more. Um, k-pop acts make their way into the american mainstream media so. yeah which is super exciting because uh there's a lot more people to influence through this how you wave yeah and i think it's working out very well i mean obviously you know bts are pioneers for that but even even aside from bts you know uh nct right yeah <clears throat> uh they've been doing a lot of stuff in america recently monster x now so black paint Blackpink too, yeah. It'll be super interesting to see what 
Um, and obviously, and, and Twice just had a concert. Yep. Or a tour. So it'll be super interesting to see like what comes of K-pop acts in the future. Hopefully, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And in fact, uh, um, well, this is kind of going to start straying into a topic that I was going to bring up for a later episode. But uh, yeah, um, when it comes to like defining K-pop generations, uh, there's a, a video out there about it too. I'll, I'll link it as well. Um, and you know, in it, you know, you talk about what sets apart the different generations. And I think for the fourth generation, because um. While I disagree that we're that we're not well, so, so some people will say that we're already in the fourth generation. Um, same with the author of that video I, I talked about. Um, I personally disagree. I think we're almost there. Um, we're on the cusp of the fourth generation, and I think one of the things that will set the fourth generation apart from previous generations is that they will be the first generation to successfully break out into the American market, where the second generation failed. Mm. So I think that Isn't will be third generation already doing that though. Well, and that so that that's what comes um that's what it comes down to right uh third generation they are opening the door uh they're mm-hmm. not you know like they're getting to the point of, of uh k-pop is now a household word in the american you know in, in the american market right mm-hmm. um they're making big uh waves in south south america and i'm not too sure what the market penetration is like in like the middle east or africa or europe but it's a pretty pretty good assumption that once something makes makes it big into the American market, um, other markets will follow. Oh yeah, definitely. So yeah, um, I think what was that is one of the things that was set apart the fourth generation is not just the American market too. Um, is that the fourth generation will be the generation of the true global idols, idol groups. Do so you think again, something more along the lines of like Produce X One Hundred One potentially, whatever group that forms? Potentially. And again, you know, I kind of want to save this discussion for a later episode where we can actually, you know, dedicate a fair amount of time to this. So, um, yeah. Uh, Cliffhanger. Cliffhanger. Yeah. So look forward to that. And then what else we got for our quick shots? Uh, That's actually the end of our quick shots. Okay. Well, then, um, how about we go into some of the upcoming comebacks that we are looking forward to? I know for myself, I'm really looking forward to Lovelies as well as Cherry Bullets. What about you? Uh, Cherry Bullet, of course. You know, I want to see what's coming from them next. Uh, and then my two other big ones is Hyolin. Okay. Which is going to be on the 23rd. And uh, NCT 127 is on the 24th. Right on. Okay. Um, why don't you go ahead and take it away, Nick, for the closing. All right. Thank you all for watching. This has been Idol Stand Nation. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You know, I want to hear from you guys. What you guys thought were, was really good comebacks, what you guys are really excited about in the future. Um, if you want to communicate with us more effectively, don't forget to join our Discord. Link is in the description. You could chat with us there in the general chat, and we will, we're pretty active here, so you can always chat there. Um, and with other Idol Stand Nation fans as well. This has been Nick and Jihoon, and we will see you guys next time. All right. See you next time. Bye. Yeah.